you know, one good example would be like if you want to actually be able to develop formulas in the system that um, show you kind of at-risk customers versus um, you know healthy customers based on financial data, such as the time it takes them to pay invoices and um, you know whether you're doing more or less work with them over a period of time, you're able to write formulas and build that directly into the system. Welcome to the AI in Accounting podcast. Now, here's your host, Joshua Feinberg of Vic.ai. So Joshua Feinberg from the AI in Accounting podcast, and I'm being joined today by Drew Kangeser from Act2 Shared Services. Drew is the Director of Professional Services based in the Houston area. Thanks, Drew, for joining me today. Happy to be here. The way I usually like to start these interviews is to understand how you got to where you are. Did you always want to be an accountant? Did you think someday that you'd be helping clients with um, software and, and ERP systems? And what, what, was the tr what was the journey that got you to where you are in, in Act 2? And how do you, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? How does that fit in with the, the firm as a whole, the kind of clients you work with? Can you give us a, a little bit of background before we roll up our sleeves and get right into Intact? Yeah. Absolutely. So I am, uh, I'm not an accountant um, by you know, school or anything else except for just, you know, being in the position I've been in. Um, my background is actually more um, technical. So I have a information systems degree um, from the University of Texas. Um, I always knew I wanted to work in software, uh, just didn't know kind of what. So I worked for um, an oil and gas company on a lot of really large scale technology projects for a couple of years. Um, not really accounting focused until I kind of moved into, uh, moved over to Act 2 where I started kind of in a, um, just as a day-to-day -day implementer. It was a bit of time implementing Intact for several years actually, where I learned a lot about accounting, um, certainly a lot more than, you know, I covered in my undergrad. Um, but a lot about accounting, a lot about, you know, how businesses run. And I really like it because you get to work with so many different companies in that role and really get an understanding of the accounting, which is kind of the, you know, the bones of how they operate. Um, and so I did that for several years, um, leading and managing, um, you know, but started with smaller projects and worked up to some of our larger ones. And in my current role, um, I'm responsible for overseeing the uh, service delivery of the professional services across kind of all of our clients at, the, uh, at Act 2, uh, whether that's implementing Intact for the first time or providing ongoing uh, implementations or on ongoing consulting services for them or really anything that comes up along with you know, helping in the sales cycle uh, with clients to understand what they need. That's great. So it's give. It sounds like you're uh, a good complement to being paired up with a, someone that came from a more traditional accounting or finance background. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. We end up hiring a lot of people here that actually have more of an accounting background. So I'm a little bit of the, uh, the outlier. Um, but we we have a nice mix on the team, which is uh, which is helpful, and I think it, it's really good. A lot of uh, good ideas for different people. I was speaking with someone earlier today who's growing an advisory firm and his prediction going out the next three years is that there's going to be a lot more firms that are looking to have a lot more diversity of disciplines and backgrounds in mm -hmm. traditional accounting and even in outsourced accounting because as accounting becomes m much more tech-driven, AI, automation, integrations, that it's not enough to just come from like an auditor write-up or tax background. Yep. Absolutely. That's why I think we, we find it's nice to have a mix. You know, one of the things that was a differentiator for me was, you know, having more experience with the technical aspects and integrations and that. Um, but then we also do see a lot of value from people that understand the, you know, the day-to-day -day processes and pain points of traditional accounting. So shifting, shifting gears a little bit from just your career, your firm, your role in Act 2 over more tactical on, on Sage Intact, what do you tell to somebody who's just joined your team or even when you go out to meet with a client and they're brand new to Intact? Um, what's your favorite tip or, or what advice would you give them to, to get started off on the right foot? 
Sure. One of, I guess, one of the real simple tips that I think is just so um, helpful that people aren't used to because they're not used to using a cloud-based accounting system is just using multiple uh, browser windows at once is extremely helpful. So being able to say, okay, I'm logged in and I have this screen up and I'm looking at, um, you know, I'm looking at entering a, a vendor's invoice and guess what? I can go on another screen and pull up the last one I got from the vendor and I can go at another screen and investigate something else. So being able to have multiple windows open at once, um, all looking at different information in the system, and especially if you're doing things like reporting where I can run a report and I can drill into the details and then I can you know, open that in a separate window. I think that's kind of the, the biggest uh, beginner tip in terms of using intact and just being able to have so many different screens open looking at different data all at once. So do you think this is just multiple uh, Chrome tabs or do you think that somebody really embraces the Houston and builds like a, like a mission control with a half a dozen different monitors? <laughs> no, I think it's, it's a lot of different Chrome tabs, but I think having them on different screens can be extremely helpful. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's funny. I think you see people that are just so used to something that's not web-based that it's like, okay, here's my screen, I work on this. Oh, now I need to go here, so I need to go there. But you can kind of have it all up at once, which is really can be helpful, especially if you're working on a lot of different things at once. So it become like institutionalized in what you do that for certain kinds of clients, you would say like, hey, you want to have these three or four screens open every day, or these half a dozen screens are open, are really good to have around month end, or? Yeah, absolutely, and especially, um, you know, if you're using dashboards in the system, um, it can be really nice just to have that real-time access to the data um, ready to go. So going to the other extreme from beginners all the way to experts for power users, if you're at a conference, maybe Sage Partner Summit or Advantage or something like that, and you're talking with other people who've been using Intact for years, um, like yourself, and maybe over a beer, you're like saying, hey, did you know that? Or maybe you're, you're talking with someone who's a product manager from Intact and uh, you're kind of sharing more stories on some of the more complicated things you have going on. What's your favorite tip that you would give to someone that's been using Intact for years? Um, I think one of the pieces that Intact's released recently that a lot of people haven't really put enough focus on is the interactive custom report writer. Um, it, it lets you do a lot of things that you can't natively do in the, in the standard report writer. Um, and I think that we're, um, you know, I, there's a lot of specific use cases, but in general, it's just, it lets you do a lot of more interactive reporting where you're, um, you're not just running kind of database sort of extracts of what the reports are and doing some formatting with it. You're able to actually put formulas into there to say, um, yeah, one good example would be like if you want to actually be able to develop formulas in the system that um, show you kind of at-risk customers versus um, you know healthy customers based on financial data, such as the time it takes them to pay invoices and um, you know whether you're doing more or less work with them over a period of time, you're able to write formulas and build that directly into the system you know, and go beyond kind of what the standard reporting has been historically at Intact, um, and that product's been out for a couple of years, and I think um, I think people know it exists and know that it can do a lot of things, but maybe haven't spent the time to really delve into how to make that a value add for companies. So I think using that to actually build formulas that help you run your business is a really big um, thing that people should be looking to more. Have you seen any leading indicators or particular problem spots among clients that would indicate that they're not using the reporting tools as aggressively as they should be? Sure. Um, I mean, one of the big things is just, you know, they'll tell you about all the different things that they do in Excel, uh, which, don't get me wrong, Excel's a great tool. does a lot of awesome stuff, but um, at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that you can systemize and the intact and have it just run for you. That way you're not you know, dealing with spreadsheets all the time. So that's definitely one. 
So I guess that part of the onboarding new clients is, hey, anytime you're doing something in Excel or Google Sheet or something, just send a screenshot of it to me and uh, we'll look and see if we can make, yeah, make that absolutely. history. Yeah. Yes, you know, every month I do, I run this report and I pull all this data. It's, most of the times there's a solution where we can just build that into the system um, and not even just have it built in there, but you can even do things like schedule it to say, okay, we're going to send this to the people that it matters to on a weekly basis so they don't even have to think to go look for it. Yeah, it's a great point too, is that when you have the report set up and you can automatically send them out to your boss, your team, investors, whoever needs to see this, so you don't, it's one extra step, it not only saves time, but you don't have to worry about forgetting to do it um, when you're on vacation, you know, all those, yep. <laughs> especially in the like times we're working in now. So regardless of whether somebody is a beginner or whether like an advanced power user, is there a, just one really big mistake that you see people making across the board that if they just knew they could avoid? Yeah, I think one of the things that I see is people that expect kind of Intact to be, to do everything. Uh, Intact does, from a financial accounting perspective, um, it does a lot of great things. Um, but I think people that don't look to um, third party products and, and things that can they can use to integrate with Intact are selling themselves short. You know, there's a lot of great, um, you know, other best in breed solutions that such as, you know, things around expense reporting, um, you know, CRM systems, a variety of things that we can integrate with Intact. So you can have, you know, all these different systems regularly communicating with each other, sending data in real time, and you kind of have different systems that are focused on what they do best. And so I think a lot of people don't take advantage of the open API that Intact offers to send that data back and forth. Um, and even beyond, you know, custom integrations they can build, um, the, you know, pre-canned ones out there with a lot of third-party products that offer AP automation, expense reporting, all those sort of things. So you'd see it as they're expecting Intact to do way more than it was ever designed to do, and because of that, they're kind of putting blinders on us about... Um, the potential of third-party apps that could integrate and and really provide that function a lot more efficiently. Yeah, I think it's I, I think some of it is just expecting that Intact's going to be the best at everything. Which you know, I think if you try to do everything, uh, you do everything kind of okay. Um, and just not looking to say you know we have these systems in play. We can look at you know a variety of systems that can really give us the best overall solution. Uh, for our business and with the you know API capabilities with all these cloud services, we can integrate it so seamlessly that it's, um, it's really easy for people to use. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting too. Is once you get outside the realm of people that have a little bit of IT background, there's still a lot that probably think integration sounds really complicated. It sounds really expensive. They may not realize in a lot of cases it's a matter of just having. Uh, both systems open in the same instance of Chrome and like authorizing, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you get people that you, it's, it's funny. We've been able to take things that someone spends, you know, five days a month on and say, well, you know, we can develop an integration that will actually just do that or something in the system that automates that um, and frees up people's time to focus on bigger issues. Um, you know, there's so often that if you just sit and look at how much time you actually spend on something versus the cost to automate it, um, I think the return on investment is there. Yeah, it's another interesting thing too is getting people to talk through their workflow and whether it's whiteboarding or however you document it, getting them to associate like, oh, okay, so how, how, off, how much time does this take? Oh, it takes like an hour and a half and how often do you do it? Like every day, wow. So you got like, hundreds of hours of years that you're doing this and all of a sudden, you know, whatever thousands or, you know, even significantly more than that, if there's multiple people doing this function. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting in the role you're at with delivering professional services. It's almost like if you don't bring this up, will will they uh, really connect the dots on the potential? 
Yeah, you, you have to disconnect just from what people are used to doing versus what they could be doing. Um, it's, you know, just because this is the process today doesn't mean it has to be the process going forward. Um, so I think being open-minded to how things can be improved is, is really helpful, especially as you go through implementing the tech this year, moving from another system. Um, it's a great opportunity to say, what can we do better? how can we improve this? It's like moving into a new home or moving into a new office and you know, do you really bring everything with you? Right? Yeah, Positive. you do. It's time to clean house a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Marie Kondo. Spring, spring cleaning for the general ledger. There you go. Um, so thinking about where we're headed, uh, you know, accounting, SaaS, CRP, we're all going through changes at a much more rapid pace in the last several weeks than many people envisioned we'd be going through right now. If you think about where a firm like Act 2, somebody in your role at Act 2, thinking ahead 6, 18, 24 months out, what do you think are going to be the, the big trends we're going to look back and say like that this was a, a big tipping point and, and like we jumped five steps forward in a relatively short period of time? Yeah, I mean... I feel like with uh, the time we're in right now with COVID out there and everyone moving to work remote increasingly, and all the uncertainty about is that going to stay or is that going to change over time, I think you're going to continue to see people really flock to cloud-based technology solutions, um, you know, Intact and, and other similar ones that are operating in this space. I know that uh, the feedback I've gotten from a lot of our customers, especially the ones that have gone live um, or just kind of started using the system in the last few months is, wow, I'm so happy we did this. And, um, because, you know, having such a remote workforce and trying to, you know, have an on-premise system just doesn't work together. And so I think it's something that people were already understanding and moving towards. But I think with the level of remote working that we're seeing right now, I think it's just going to accelerate it even further. And you're going to see a lot of people really looking at more cloud-based solutions so that people can easily access their data and work remotely. Is this something that you're seeing a lot of demand for now, even just at Act2 where a lot of companies have been really, really resistant with legacy systems and all of a sudden now they for lack of a better word, don't have a choice? I think, so I've been with Act2 for six years, and I would say when I started, we were, you know, if you look at kind of the different stages of any newer technology, I think we were kind of in the early adopter stage still then, where you had certain people that had more of a sort of visionary, you know, like, we need to move to the cloud now so that we can do all of these sort of things. And then I think it's moved further and further into just being kind of the new form um, that a lot of companies are looking at that um, and it's becoming a lot more mature over those six years. And so I think we're kind of in that stage now where a lot of people are realizing we have to do this. And I think with the increase in remote work, it's just going to even shoot up even further um, to just being what people do. Uh, and I, you know, looking out over the next year to two years, I think you're going to see um, not only a lot more people moving that direction, but probably a lot more companies trying to um, move themselves into the cloud to provide offerings to uh, meet that demand. So not only to run their business, but actually what their product or service is by definition needs to be able to be delivered through the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. From customer customer facing what would have been called a, I don't know, 20 years ago, an extranet. Yeah. Now it's just software, right? Apps, service. Um, very, very interesting perspective on all this. Drew, if somebody wants to uh, get a hold of you based on, uh, talk more about some of the, the topics you brought up in today's episode or wants to follow you or there are certain social media uh, places that are good particularly good to find you at or, or to learn more about you and Act2? And... Yeah, um, I think you can go to the Act2 website and it actually has a lot of the people on the team. You'll see my face 
um, with maybe a biography or a, I believe at least a link to my LinkedIn, um, which once again, I think LinkedIn is probably the easiest way to contact me. I should be the only Drew Kaiser on there. I'm the only one that I know of. Um, so it should make it easy to find me. Um, and yeah, absolutely. If you guys have any questions or uh, just want to talk, feel free to reach out. Love to connect with you. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today, Drew. It's been really interesting to get your perspective on how you got to where you are in the career, being someone coming from more of an IT background than a traditional accounting background, the tips around um, uh, understanding the multiple browsers and, and having the ability to look at information in, in a bunch of different ways as opposed to being limited to just one view. Uh, the idea of using formulas and, and the reports, uh, all of this has been hugely, hugely helpful. And I really appreciate you, you sharing all your, all your knowledge and best practices. Absolutely. Happy to share. Well, thanks again. I wish you all the best. Stay safe. Thanks for listening to this episode of the AI and Accounting Podcast. To subscribe and leave a review, check us out at blog.vic.ai or wherever you like to consume podcast episodes, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. 